Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today on Developing a Research-Driven Approach and Investment Bank's Perspective, hosted by OTC Markets and Noble Capital Markets. I'm joined here today with Michael Kapinski, the Director of Research for Noble Capital Markets, who has 35 years of experience in the research space and has been named by Wall Street Journal an all-star analyst six times. Michael, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Rachel, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for your interest today, and certainly thank you, OTC Markets, for this opportunity. My goal today is to introduce you to Noble, to outline our research strategy given our significant changes in, in the industry, and to highlight some of the unique attributes of our research analyst and our unsurpassed distribution. Noble is a research-driven investment bank for small cap and micro cap companies. And what is important about that statement is that it has been consistent since its inception. While other firms have chased market caps upward to go after trading volumes, our mission has been to identify underfollowed, sometimes orphaned, or even misunderstood companies that our analysts view as potential yet undiscovered value for investors. From our humble beginnings, Noble started as a full-service broker-dealer, initially with retail and investment banking, and was very successful. The company intensified its focus on research beginning in 1998 and then in 2005 with the launch of its equity conferences. I joined the firm in 2007 and further elevated the company's institutional quality research by bringing on some top talent. Noble moved to the company-sponsored research in late November 2018 and launched Channel Check, which is a database for microcap and small cap companies in that year as well. It's probably not surprising to anyone on this call today that business has changed over the years, but virtually every public company has been affected as well. These changes have made it more difficult for OTC companies to get noticed. Complicated regulations that were aimed at larger companies have the greatest impact on smaller companies, significantly raising the cost of being a public company. Starting in 2000 with fair disclosure regulations, followed by Sorbanes-Oxley in 2002, then the financial crisis, of course, in 2007, all of this ushered a new level of regulations uh, which also included Dodd-Frank in 2010. Some far-reaching regulations uh, in Europe called MidFid has further disrupted the sell-side research business. And what's important here is that MidFid has impacted the U.S. in two ways. The regulations have been quasi-implemented in the United States, largely due to international companies that must comply with European-based regulations, and the second issue has been the explosive growth of passive investing, which we, uh, investing, which we call ETFs, and certainly technology, regulation, and liquidity concerns. All of these have had factors where institutions have virtually stopped, with increasingly few exceptions. They stopped paying for research published on microcap companies. And as a, an example, roughly 50% of Noble's revenues came from institutional research sales 10 years ago. Now a modest 5% is from commissioned business. Certainly the other aspect here is that this has had an effect on research departments as well. As this article highlights, MidFit has made it difficult to attract and retain quality analysts as many of them leave the industry. And this has had a bigger impact on coverage of smaller companies. While the larger companies can lose one or two analysts because they may have nine or more covering analysts, the smaller com uh, cap companies with limited coverage significantly feel the impact. Our industry has always been heavily regulated, but the regulatory scrutiny has been intense, even by the organization formed by the industry itself. As you can see from some of these headlines, 2018 FINRA fines increase, biggest fin FINRA penalties, uh, the agency has turned its bark into a bite. These are just some of the articles that highlight the extra scrutiny that is received by, by FINRA. 
this has had a, an, an effect on uh, the, the registered active broker dealers. And over the last dec decade, we've seen a significant 30% decrease in active broker dealers. So Walt Disney was one of the most influential CEOs and most quotable of his time. And I used to follow the Walt Disney co company and always admire his management. And this quote from Walt is instructive about where our industry stands today. You may not realize it when it happens, but a kick in the teeth may be the best thing in the world for you. It's not surprising that the industry is moving uh, toward a new model, and I believe that Noble is leading the way. And that is company-sponsored research. And I'm not talking about promotional propaganda, but institutional quality research. So, um, Michael, can I just stop you there for a second? We, we have a question in the, in the question box um, asking if there's a stigma attached to paid-for research. Oh, thanks, Rachel, for that question. Um, you know, 10 years ago, and even a short three years ago, I would have said yes. Uh, company-sponsored research back then was heavily promotional. It was largely uh, the company's presentation or slide deck. It had very little fundamental analysis. But over the years, there's been a significant improvement in the quality and analytic elements uh, in the research product. And with that has come the respect from the buy side and from investors. And if, and if I can go to my next slide, um, this, explains, uh, this explains why. The, you know, objective, unbiased, third-party research. And for some reason, um, there we go. Uh, there's the next slide. Um, objective, unbiased, third-party research. The trusted voice of FINRA licensed, accredited, experienced analysts. And I believe this is the heart of the evolution towards sponsored research and why Noble's research is accepted and also valuable to institutional and retail investors. You know, in the past, the buy side knew that analysts were not simply recommending a stock because they thought the stock would go higher. Let's be frank. Analysts were pressured to generate commissions and find companies with banking business. And to me, that is the essence of biased research. And that model is just gone. So we, we have another question uh, in the chat box, Michael. Um, noble analysts are FINRA licensed and regulated. Uh, does this make a difference uh, on the research? For sure, it makes a difference. Um, the analysts follow the rules and regulations of FINRA, which also means that they cannot be promotional, that they will provide objective research a rating and a price target. And those price targets are based on valuation methodologies, which must be adhered to. In my view, most FINRA licensed analysts are disciplined and provide a thoughtful analytic view of the company. Probably most importantly, each analyst puts his or her license on the line every day they publish a report and certify their independence. And in, in, in other words, they are held to a higher standard than unlicensed individuals offering unregulated services. Now, I really thank you for that question because it's an excellent question. Absolutely. Institutions um, want to uh, want the analyst price target. They want the market rating, fundamental analysis, and financial models. And I know that some of you may say um, institutions don't really want a price target. They develop their own, and that may be true. But those same institutions will use the analyst model and fundamental analysis and likely use the analyst valuation methodology to determine their own price target. They may pick apart how an analyst got to a price target, but ultimately they want to know what that target is. And, and the key takeaway here is that institutional investors and retail investors want it all to make their investment decisions. It's important to stress that analysts are not compensated based on their opinion, and there are no ties to investment banking. So um, one more question here. Um, somebody wants to know what happens if they do a cap raise with another bank, and do you drop your coverage should that happen? Okay, great question. 
Uh, Noble certainly has a complete suite of services, including investment banking, merchant banking, M&A advisory, valuations, trading, wealth management, and we look to develop long-term relationships with our covered companies. But there is no play to pay for research. We would not drop coverage. And ironically, if a company would do that under the old school Wall Street model, it's very likely that the research coverage would be dropped. And that is the way Wall Street worked. It's not the way we do uh, things at Noble. So moving on to the, the next slide, uh, thoughtful institutional quality research becomes an effective foundation for any company's investor relations strategy. And an analyst report can explain the developments at a company and reach a significant number of investment and investors with a push of the button. And I can say that we work well with both internal and external IR, and we augment the effort to identify potential investors and to raise investor awareness. I like this. Uh, I like to highlight this uh, this chart. Um, started in 1970s by Chuck Royce, the Royce funds are arguably one of the leading small cap investment firms in the country. Um, and in fact, at an OTC market sponsored event last week, uh, Jim Harvey, a portfolio manager and principal at the firm, stated, I'm not biased against company sponsored research when it's written by quality FINRA licensed analysts. And my analogy to this quote is you wouldn't get operated on by someone who didn't have a medical license. So uh, I think it has a very similar connotation. Most of the companies um, that are highlighted on this slide were companies that were on the OTC and grew past that. And in my view, research provided that visibility for these companies. And in some cases, uh, with the help of banking, they were able to graduate to list on the NASDAQ. What's important about this chart is that all of the companies on this list, Noble provided research for, and in most cases, Noble was the first to cover them. Uh, companies like Therapeutics MD, we picked up coverage when the market cap was 50 million, now it's 800 million. A stock that I happened to follow, PetMeds, was a modest 3 million and ran as high as 1 billion in market cap. And importantly, we view the OTC markets as a great overlooked hunting ground for our analysts to find uh, new ideas. And here's a good example when things align. You know, uh, this company uh, is Synopsis. Um, starting in early 2013, our analysts found a Synopsis on the OTC markets and brought it to our scientific advisory board. And he initiated in July of that year with the stock at a mere 14 million in market cap. And through increased investor awareness from research and the attendance at Noble's equity conferences, the company through Noble's IB department was able to raise capital. And in fact, the last one, we were joined by Bank of America. And what I think is really instructive here is that in just a short three years following this initiation, the company was sold for 624 million in cash. I believe that the research support was instrumental in raising this company's investor profile and contributed to the ability to raise capital. Of course, at the heart of a good institutional uh, quality research is the, are the analysts, and this is the research team. And as the director of research, hopefully I'm allowed to brag on my team. Um, I'm very proud of the team that I've assembled at Noble. All our FINRA license have their accreditation, many with 20 to even 30 years of experience. I believe that our average age, uh, our average years of experience is like 23. Uh, tremendous amount of knowledge with analysts that, that have lived through many cycles in the, in the market. Our areas of focus are in high growth industries like biotech, business services, media, and natural resources. Um, in addition, many of our recommendations tackle complicated stories, which may be underfollowed or misunderstood. And of course, finding those gems um, have been a specialty with our analysts and has led to our analysts being highly accredited. A collective 38 best on the street rankings are surveyed by the Wall Street Journal for stock picking and earnings estimates. And all of the analysts are connected to the buy side, well connected to the buy side. 
and have developed distribution lists. Those lists were enhanced over time, and each analyst stakes the reputation on their licenses on the integrity of their research. And I would have to say that, uh, you know, that many have asked, well, is, is it possible to get, uh, you know, a bad report from Noble Analyst? And what I would say is that when the analyst is looking for companies to follow, they are looking for compelling ideas. So it is likely that the analyst will be constructive on the story, but that doesn't mean that they will have an outperform rating. In fact, there have been instances where uh, an analyst is in initiated with a market perform rating based on valuation. Uh, and as it turned out, the stock provided an opportunity for the analyst to raise the rating. Um, this is just another example of the integrity of our research and why it's respected on the street. And in that example that I mentioned, uh, the company management respected the analyst opinion. And in fact, uh, you know, we, we believe that uh, given the breadth of the experience of our analysts, the management have often viewed our analyst as a resource. So we have, um, we have one more question. Um, do smaller cap companies typically engage a single sponsored research provider? Um, so it, 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 it typically, I, you know, small cap companies have a problem in attracting research, and and in the case of having a having one sponsor, it does raise the investment profile and eventually could lead to additional um, additional analyst coverage. But it, 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 getting that first step to get the first uh, the first one is in the important step. The most important thing is that one thing that I would like to highlight is that. Um, just because a company has an interest in Noble to sponsor research doesn't mean that we would pick up coverage. It, it really is up to the analyst. It, it, uh, the analyst is the, one, is the starting point that initiates the process for uh, company-sponsored research. Thank you for that. Thank you. So Noble's research uh, distribution is largely unsurpassed in the industry. It's a combination of institution and retail distribution. And I mentioned earlier that the analyst distribution list, but we also provide our research for free on third-party distribution partners such as Bloomberg, Thomson Reuters, Capital IQ, Factset, and so forth. And notably, we provide our research on social media platforms as well as on our exclusive channel check platform, which I'll talk a little bit about later. Uh, notably, we, we have broad distribution and our research is well respected. And as, as a result, our third party distribution partners carry our estimates from our research reports. And, and this is unique for sponsored research. As uh, you can find that in, in other sponsored research, you won't be able to find um, revenues or even earnings uh, estimates. Um, you can find our revenue and earnings estimates on all of the platforms, Bloomberg, Facts, at Thomson Reuters, Capital IQ, and the like. And in addition, Noble has invested software to aggregate all of our research downloads from all of our sources, including Bloomberg and Facts at and Thomson, and from our analyst-owned distribution list. And this is a great resource to determine areas of interest by financial institutions because we see when they're downloading those research reports and we aggregate those into a database. And as I mentioned, the analyst distribution lists and Noble's list were compiled over the past 35 years, and it's impressive with over 40,000 contacts. And finally, simultaneous with Noble's launch of sponsored research, the company launched Channel Check, its proprietary small cap and micro cap database. So we'd like to say, if you're looking for the next Apple, Channel Check is the orchard. And if I like to uh, just to mention that what's important about Channel Check is that it delivers institutional quality research to a community that Wall Street, I believe, is kind of left behind. You know, most of the research on Wall Street is directed to their paying institutional clients. Um, but we aim to serve the community such as mom and pop, family firms that may manage, you know, 200 to 400 million, and that they may not be getting quality research. 
So this chart illustrates that there's a vast pool of investable funds that may not be adequately served. So this is what channel check looks like. Um, what is noticeable is that there are no advertisements and it's rich in content. And the site features uh, news, research, market data, industry reports, webcasts and podcasts, and investor decks. And at Noble, we would like to develop interest in investing in uh, and also to attract students to choose careers uh, in the financial community. Um, as a result, Noble just recently launched the College Research Report Challenge, and um, I'd like to just take a second here and just kind of uh, let you watch the video here. I don't know, are you hearing the sound? It's uh, not coming through with sound. Okay. Um, so basically, the uh, as you probably are are, are reading through um, the text on this video, um, it mentions about our uh, contest where there's up to $7,500 that can be applied to the student's tuition. Um, there's a, a, a paid internship uh, opportunity and, um, as well, and. As the, as the video you know, kind of mentions when you read through the text, um, there's, uh, the winner will receive a trip to our uh, equity conference called NobleCon 16, which will be held at the amazing Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Florida. And it, as you're seeing this on the slide deck right now, that guitar is not a logo, that is actually the hotel. Um, we hope to see many of you there. It's, a, it's limited to about 125 companies and it's been growing to over 600 participants. So let's talk about the product. Um, the research includes a minimum of four research reports as, and as many as needed based on company or industry developments. Uh, the cost is 4,000 to 5,000 per month, and that range depends upon the complication of the story and possible scientific knowledge that may be needed, and I would think biotech, for example, um, there is no contract for trading or investment banking, um, but that is available if needed. So um, we will allow for another minute or two for people to submit questions in the chat box available. And just to let everybody know, um, this presentation will be sent around and archived. It will have Michael's contact information if you have any other noble specific questions. Uh, Michael, I want to thank you for your time today. We really appreciate it. And uh, we look forward to hosting more events with Noble in the future. Thank you, Rachel. I appreciate it greatly. Thank you. All right. Have a good day. Take care.